Good evening, and welcome as we celebrate America together. Stand with me as the United States colors are presented. On behalf of Dr. Robert Jeffress and the First Baptist Church of Dallas, it is my honor to welcome those present tonight and the millions of viewers throughout the world joining us on Daystar Television to the Celebrate Freedom concert at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts here in Washington, D.C. As Jesus Christ instructed us, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. And tonight, we honor those military veterans, those heroes who courageously served our country so that we could enjoy freedoms and religious liberties as Americans. Moreover, we are here tonight to celebrate the freedom we have through Jesus Christ. When the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. And so tonight in our nation's capital, we praise and proclaim the name of Jesus, the Son of God, who came and humbled himself becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, but rose again in victory so that we might enjoy freedom from sin and death forever. Now, coming to lead us in prayer tonight, the representative from the great state of Texas, Congressman Louis Gomer. Well, 
Thank you. Uh, sometimes when people get ready to pray, they ask you to stand. Sometimes they ask you to sit. But I am living proof that God hears you. Whether you're standing up, whether you're lying on your face, whether you're dangling from a rope 40 feet up, God hears your prayer. What's important? And this is what I ask you to do. Would you please bow your hearts with me? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can call you Father, that you are our God. And we thank you for the greatest blessing you've given us, the blessing of liberty. You've given us freedom of choice. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the opportunity to spread with our earthly voices, the sublime, the good news about Jesus Christ. And we know George Washington prayed that you would have our country in your holy protection and affection, that we would have that affection for those who have served in our military. So we thank you for allowing us to be your hands to comfort, to nurse our military's wounds, and, as Lincoln said, to bind up those wounds. But we confess to our failing you as your hands, failing to care for those who borne the battle, as we allowed too often our Veterans Administration to grow with increasing bureaucracy with more reasons not to help our heroes. We know so many heroes have been helped by the VA, but so many under our allowance have not done them justice. So we pray that we will cease refusing to even acknowledge ways that our nation has been responsible for hurting our veterans, whether Agent Orange or water at Camp Lejeune, Father, help us to address those problems and never, ever betray our military. We pray that you will continue with the patience you've given us and have just a little more patience as we, with souls anew, commit to helping those who have put their lives at risk for us. And may no one ever hear as some of us did at Fort Benning when the flags presented to the survivor with the words, on behalf of a grateful nation, the family say, where? Where's the grateful nation? There is none. Father, please help us to ensure that never happens again. We acknowledge that too often the reasons that our veterans are giving up hope is because they don't know the hope in you. So we pray that you will allow in this administration the indications that this president has made that they are going to be able to worship their Lord instead of having to remove your name and your symbols from the tanks, the barracks, the foxholes, the submarines, the planes that you will return as the hope of our military for all who know you. And we pray that you will be acknowledged as the one true hope. We know there are more veterans now and more active military taking the permanent solution to their temporary problems. And Father, we must take some responsibility because we have withheld from them the one true hope, as Chuck Colson said, our hope will be in and is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So, Father, I also pray that the study that was done by our military entity of thousands to try to figure out why so many were committing suicide will finally be brought forward so that if it's true what I've told that that those that killed themselves that were studied were in the 2% least religious of all those in the military. Father, if that's true, we need to know it and we need to fix it. And Father, I close this plea to you, Lord, quoting George Washington in his prayer and his resignation as a commander that you would dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, to demean ourselves 
with such charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion. He knew Jesus Christ. May all of our military come to know. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of the choir of orchestra of First Baptist Dallas and all who are our church family back in Texas, we are thankful that you're here to celebrate with us. Thousands, maybe millions tonight tuning in. But for all of our friends here in the Kennedy Center, wave your flags and sing the songs that celebrate America with us.
celebrate the blessing of being Americans. And we want to say a big thank you to those who are serving and have served in America's military. The men and women who defend and protect our country and its citizens. Amen. So if you're here tonight and you are serving or you have served, when we sing the song that represents your branch of service, stand and wave your flag because we want to sing and say thank you. for your service. Oh, you may be seated, everyone. What a great moment. And here's another one. Would you help me welcome to our stage tonight a friend of ours. He's the Dean of the School of Church Music at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. We love him, Dr. Leo Day. Come and sing for us.
Jesus to break every chain, 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 break every chain. Come on, choir.
Well, we're thankful tonight for our opportunity to premiere that song, Make America Great Again. And we're also thankful. And we're thankful that its composer, a former minister of music at First Baptist Church of Dallas, is here with us celebrating tonight. Gary Moore, would you please stand? Great job. Well, while we're thanking folks, I would like to take a dedicated moment to thank our Daystar television host, Marcus and Joni Lamb. Thank you for your generosity toward us tonight. <laughs> Lastly, I would, thank, I would like to thank the six area choirs that have joined us from area churches to perform a mass choir for the singing of a song, including our next song, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. These are Trinity Life Church, Christ Chapel Church, Emmanuel Bible Church, West End Assembly of God, Riverdale Ministries, and First Baptist Church of Alexandria. Thank you for joining us and lending your voices to us tonight.
Ladies and gentlemen, the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Dr. Robert Jeffress. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Trust me, I'm just the warm-up act. (laughs) Good evening. I am Robert Jeffers, the pastor of the great First Baptist Church in Dallas. And on behalf of First Baptist Church Dallas, we want to welcome you to this Celebrate Freedom Rally live from the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. In Psalm 33, verse 12, the psalmist declared, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It is absolutely an, it is absolutely an indisputable fact that our nation was founded on a love for God and a reverence for His Word. And because of that, we have experienced the undeserved favor of God upon our country. But it is also an indisputable fact that in recent years there have been those who have tried to separate our nation from its spiritual foundation. And that reality has caused many of us, many Christians, to despair and to wonder, is God finished with America? Are our best days over? Has God removed His hand of blessing from us? But in the midst of that despair, came November the 8th, 2016. And that day, (laughs) that day represented the greatest political upset in American history. Because it was on that day, November 8th, that God declared that the people, not the pollsters, were going to choose the next president of the United States. And they chose Donald Trump. You know this, you've heard it often, 
President Trump won the evangelical vote by the largest margin in history because Christians understood that he alone had the leadership skills necessary to reverse the downward death spiral our nation was in. And since that time, since that time, everywhere I go, I find that people are even more excited about President Trump than they were on Election Day. And it's easy to understand why. President Trump has not only met but he has exceeded our every expectation in reviving the economy, rebuilding our military, respecting our veterans, and restoring our greatest freedom of all, the free exercise of our faith. <laughs> President Trump has done more to protect religious liberty than any president in United States history, and we are grateful to him for that. You know, the single greatest honor of my life was when President Trump invited me to deliver the sermon at St. John's Church on the morning of his inauguration. And in that message, I said no president has ever entered the Oval Office with as many natural gifts and leadership abilities as President Trump. But I also noted that President Trump would be the first to say that natural ability alone is not enough to meet the awesome challenges of that office. And that is why President Trump, like every American president, has sought God's supernatural help. You know, I will never forget that message so many of us saw that the president tweeted from Israel several months ago. Do you remember the picture? It was a, president of, a picture of President Trump standing in front of the Western Wall. His head was bowed. His eyes were closed. And at the bottom of that tweet, he wrote, I am asking for God's wisdom. That is one reason I am so enthusiastically supportive of this president. You know, millions of Americans believe that the election of President Trump represented God giving us another chance perhaps our last chance to truly make America great again. And how grateful we are. We thank God every day that he gave us a leader like President Trump. Would you join me now in welcoming a great leader, a great patriot, my friend, the President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. This is some group. Some group. Nice to win, isn't it? Isn't it nice to win? 
Robert, thank you very much for that incredible introduction, and thank you to everyone from First Baptist Dallas. Thank you. Pastor, you and Amy have stood with us since the very, very beginning, and I will always stand with you. I've told you that, and I mean that. I will always be with you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm honored to join you at the first ever 4th of July Freedom Rally taking place here at the Kennedy Center as we pay tribute to those who have proudly served our nation in uniform. Thank you very much. Tonight, we have been inspired by music that fills our hearts, stirs our souls, and reminds us all of who we are. One nation under God. To First Baptist music director Doran Bug, and to every musician and member of the choir who has performed with such incredible grace and skill. And I heard them backstage. I said, let me out there. That is the most beautiful music. Beautiful. I just want to say that your music honors our heroes more eloquently than words could ever do. And I just want to thank you. That's real talent standing behind me. Thank you, folks. Thank you. And let me say to the hundreds of veterans with us tonight that for my very first Independence Day celebration as president, there is no place I'd rather be than with you. I'll tell you that. And I promise you, and you see it happening day by day, just the other day, we signed Veterans Accountability. They've been trying to do it for 40 years. For 40 years, they've been trying. You couldn't fire somebody if they were horrible, doing a terrible job for the veterans. Robbing, stealing, hurting people, you couldn't do anything. It's called the Veterans Accountability Act. And now you can say, you're fired. <laughs> Thank you. And I promise you that we will always take care of our great veterans. Always. Right, Louis? better believe it. And Paula's up there. Paula White has been so helpful. You, Thank you. I love you, too, actually. <laughs> you've shed your blood, you've poured your love, and you've bared your soul in defense of our country, our people, and our great American flag. Your loyalty to our nation is measured not merely in words, but in deeds, you raced through gunfire, stared down enemy forces, and ran past the gates of hell to fight and to win for America. And you won for America. And we're going to take care of it. Thank you. The story of America's men and women in uniform is the story of freedom and overcoming oppression, the strong protecting the weak and the good defeating evil. There's a lot of evil out there, I want to tell you. There's a lot of evil. I was left a mess, the fact is, but we're cleaning it up. You watch. Cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. We are awed by your service and your sacrifice. 
And so to the veterans here tonight, of which there are many, will you please stand right now? Please stand. Thank you. On behalf of our very grateful nation, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will always, always remember what you did for us. Tonight we celebrate veterans. We also reflect on everything we cherish as Americans. We love our country. We love our families. We love our freedom. And we love our God. Since the signing of the Declaration of Independence 241 years ago, America always affirmed that liberty comes from our Creator. Our rights are given to us by God, and no earthly force can ever take those rights away. That is why my administration is transferring power out of Washington and returning that power back to where it belongs, to the people. To the people. The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them. Because the people know the truth. The fake media tried to stop us from going to the White House, but I'm president and they're not. We won, and they lost. The fact is, the press has destroyed themselves because they went too far. Instead of being subtle and smart, they used the hatchet. And the people saw it right from the beginning. The dishonest media will never keep us from accomplishing our objectives on behalf of our great American people. Will never happen. Their agenda is not your agenda. You've been saying it. I will never stop fighting for you. I am delivering on trade, on the economy, on the Supreme Court, on the Second Amendment, on our military, for our veterans, and on our borders, where we are doing record, record stoppage. Thank you. And we are supporting our incredible police and law enforcement.
We will save American lives, protect American sovereignty, and we will ensure the forgotten men and women of our country are never forgotten again. For too long, politicians have tried, oh, have they tried, to centralize authority among the hands of a small few in our nation's capital. I see them all the time. Bureaucrats think they can run over your lives, overrule your values, meddle in your faith, and tell you how to live, what to say, and where to pray. But we know that parents, not bureaucrats, know best how to raise their children and create a thriving society. And we know that families and churches, not government officials, know best how to create a strong and loving community. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God. Religious liberty is enshrined in the very first amendment in the Bill of Rights. The American founders invoked our creator four times in the Declaration of Independence. Benjamin Franklin reminded his colleagues at the Constitutional Convention to begin by bowing their heads in prayer. I remind you that we're going to start saying Merry Christmas again. <laughs> Inscribed on our currency are the words, In God We Trust. But not only has God bestowed on us the gift of freedom, he's also given us the gift of heroes willing to give their lives to defend that freedom. You just stood. In every struggle against evil throughout our history, as America's service members have huddled around campfires and sought refuge in foxholes, they've called on their creator for support. In World War II, when General George Patton, that was a real general. We got some Pattons today too. I found him. Mad Dog Matters, right? <laughs> and he doesn't like doing a lot of talking, but I want to tell you, ISIS, it's a whole different ball game, folks. <laughs> They're going fast. But when Patton ran into a problem that he couldn't solve, he knew what to do. He prayed. Frustrated by rains that were stalling the advance of his third army across Europe in early December 1944, horrible weather, Patton asked an army chaplain to come up with a good prayer for the weather. Patton then had a quarter of a million copies of that prayer printed and distributed to the soldiers of the third army 
just before the Battle of the Bulge. That was a big one. Did very well there. 500,000 American soldiers fought that pivotal battle of the Second World War. One of those soldiers is here with us tonight. His name is Harry F. Miller. Where's Harry? Where's Harry? Harry, stand up, Harry. Like many of the heroes of his generation, Harry wasn't exactly straightforward about his age when he enlisted in the Army Reserve. Shame on you, Harry. He was just 15, but he told them he was old enough to join. Then he immediately asked for a transfer to active duty. Six months after he enlisted, Private Miller was on his way to Europe to fight for our country. Great. A couple of months after that, he was in the freezing cold. How cold was it, Harry? Cold. He said really cold. And driving range of Belgium with a 740th tank battalion attached to the 82nd Airborne. As the Battle of the Bulge began, Harry got his orders to go find tanks at a weapons storage facility. When he arrived, he says, he and his friends found nothing but tanks. They were all over the place, right? Nothing but tanks. But they didn't let the tanks stop them. Out of what spare parts they could find, and through sheer grit and resolve, they somehow managed to repair three of those tanks and get them all set for action and ready to fight. And before long, those three tanks were nose to nose with the lead elements of a German SS Panzer Division. And that was tough stuff. In a short time, those tanks had knocked out the first three tanks of the enemy and the entire German division retreated. They left. That's good, Harry. That's good, Harry. Harry fought through the battle and the rest of the war, and he went on to serve our armed forces for 22 years, retiring as a senior master sergeant. A lot of guts. Tomorrow, Harry will be 89 tomorrow. 89. So on behalf of this very large group in this beautiful building, Senior Master Sergeant Miller, happy birthday. Thank you for your lifetime of service, and thank you for helping out. Thank you very much, Eric. <laughs> to every veteran with us tonight from every branch of the military, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard, I want you to know that we will always keep our promises to those who have kept us free. Since my very first day in office, we've taken one action after another to make sure that our veterans get the care they so richly deserve. We've published wait times. Those wait times were bad, weren't they? But boy, are they getting better and fast. 
And we've published them at every VA facility. Delivered same-day mental health services at every VA medical center. Nearly doubled. The number of veterans given approvals to see the doctor of their choice. And as I said, just signed, brand new legislation went through the House, went through the Senate, and I signed it so fast, we didn't want to take any chances, right, Harry? To ensure every VA worker is held accountable for the quality of care they provide to our veterans. Tonight, we are deeply honored to be joined by a number of wounded warriors from Walter Reed. I was over there recently. These are incredible people. The enthusiasm and the spirit, and some of them were hurt really badly. They've got so much spirit, and they love this country so much. These American heroes risked everything so that you and I can live in freedom. They gave all they had, everything for their comrades, their country, and for victory. They like winning. We like winning again, don't we? You know, in the old days, we used to win. We sort of just keep fighting and fighting and fighting. We're going to win again, folks. We applaud their strength, their courage, and we really support that incredible wind that they have. The will, the will is so strong, and that's what they want to do, is they want to win, and they want to win for you. So thank you all very much for being here. That was great. One such hero is Captain Luis Avila. Where is he? Luis. Luis, uh, we love you, Luis. Luis, wow. Luis is here tonight along with his wife, Claudia. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Luis served in the Army for 16 years. He held many different positions on five combat tours. And he was always a leader, and everybody always said, I did some checking on you, Luis, that you did a great job no matter where you were, no matter where you went. On his fifth deployment, Luis bravely led his company on a successful mission to recover vital intelligence. During this critical mission, his vehicle was struck by explosives. Luis was gravely wounded and lost his leg. He received a Purple Heart for his service and sacrifice. To Luis and Claudia, we will never forget the courageous sacrifice that you made for all of us in this room tonight and for everyone in our country. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. I want you all and all of our incredible wounded warriors to know you have an entire nation of more than 300 million people behind you. And our nation's getting strong again. Do you notice? It's getting strong again. Our hearts and our prayers are joined with yours. Your legacy, like our gratitude, will live forever, and I want to thank you. Thank you very much. And Claudia, thank you very much. Thank you. I also
also want to speak to all of the people. See, you thought I forgot. In our faith community who are here with us tonight, veterans and non-veterans alike. You're never going to be forgotten. You'll never be forgotten. My administration will always support and defend your religious liberty. We don't want to see God forced out of the public square, driven out of our schools, or pushed out of our civic life. We want to see prayers before football games if they want to give prayers. We want all children to have the opportunity to know the blessings of God. We will not allow the government to censor sermons, to restrict the free speech of our pastors and our preachers and the people that we most respect. Like Robert. That is why, just as I promised Pastor Jeffress and other faith leaders, I just signed an executive order following, and this is something that makes me very happy and very proud, following through on my campaign pledge to stop the Johnson Amendment from interfering with your First Amendment rights. As long as I am president, no one is going to stop you from practicing your faith or from preaching what is in your heart. We want to hear him. One of the most grave and dire threats to religious freedom in the world today is the threat of terrorism. And specifically, it just seems It's called Radical Islamic Terrorism. And we cannot allow this terrorism and extremism to spread in our country or to find sanctuary on our shores or in our cities. We want to make sure that anyone who seeks to join our country shares our values and has the capacity to love our people. Thank you. Together, we will protect our families, our nations, and our borders. And yes, by the way, for those that are curious, we will build the wall, okay? Because we understand that a country is more than just its geography. A nation is the sum of its citizens, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations. America is a land rich with history, traditions, and values. And as we have seen tonight, what a group this is tonight, America is also a land rich with heroes. And though we have many stories, we all share one home, and one glorious 
destiny, a destiny that's getting better and better every single day. And whether we are black or brown or white, and you've heard me say this before, we all bleed the same red blood. We all salute the same great American flag. And we are all made by the same almighty God. We face many challenges. There are many hills and mountains to climb. But with the strength and courage of the patriots assembled in this room tonight, we will scare, I mean, and you see it, and you see it all the time, and we're doing it all the time, because we're scaling those summits, and we will get the job done. We will all prove worthy of this very important moment in history. And we will prove worthy of the sacrifice that our brave veterans have made. As long as we have pride in our beliefs, courage in our convictions, and faith in our God, we will not fail. As long as our country remains true to its values, loyal to its heroes, and devoted to its creator, then our best days are yet to come, because we will make America great again. Thank you. To my friend, Pastor Jeffers, and to Paula, and to Louie, and to Harry, and to Luis, and to everybody in this room, and everybody in this country, thank you for your great support. I appreciate it. I will not let you down. To all of our incredible veterans, to the people in the military, and to evangelical Christians who came out in record, record, record numbers. Thank you. Have a wonderful Independence Day. God bless you. God bless our nation's veterans. God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. You may be seated. And once again, would you help me thank our area choirs that have joined us tonight. Thank you. God's Word tells us that in the beginning the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. His Word is flawless. He is our shield and our refuge. We hope you'll use the words that are printed in your playbill tonight. And as you feel led, you sing with us.
That's the message we are here to proclaim tonight, that Jesus can save anyone and everyone who's willing to ask. There are some words that have been attributed to the French historian Alexei de Tocqueville after he visited America. And alleg allegedly he said, I sought for the greatness and genius of America in her harbors and her ample rivers, in her fertile fields and boundless prairies in her rich minds, in her vast world commerce, in her public school system and her institutions of learning, and in her democratic congress and her matchless constitution, 
but it was not there. Not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits aflame with righteousness did I understand the secret of America's genius and power. America is great because she is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. You know, the key to greatness is goodness. That's true nationally, that is true individually. We cannot be great without being good. The problem is, none of us is good enough, are we? The fact is, the Bible says, we've all fallen short of God's ideal. The Bible says, for all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That word sin simply means to miss the mark. I bet you don't need a Baptist preacher to tell you you've missed the mark. I know I certainly have. We miss the mark in our marriages, and we miss the mark in God's plan for our careers. We miss the mark in parenting. We fall short so easily and in so many ways. And the Bible says because we've fallen short of God's plan, we all deserve to be punished by God. But the good news that you just heard tonight is this. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus is willing to forgive you, to save you, if you will simply ask him. That's the good news of the gospel. Jesus said it this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes, trusts, and clings to him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. I don't think it's an accident you're here tonight, or you've tuned into this television broadcast, or you're listening on radio. Perhaps you tuned in in order to hear great patriotic music you did. Or maybe you came to see our great president. He delivered a stirring address tonight. But I believe God has arranged for you to be here, or perhaps to listen to this broadcast so that you could receive the greatest gift of all, the gift that comes from God, the gift of his forgiveness and a new beginning in life. The Bible says if any person be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Tonight, if you would like to say, God, I need your forgiveness in my life. I know I have fallen short. And I want to have a relationship with you. I want to know that I'm going to be with you forever in heaven one day. That's something you can't work for, you can't earn. You receive it as a gift. And tonight, if you would like to receive God's forgiveness for whatever you've done in life, I want to invite you. In fact, why don't we all bow our heads right now, every one of us, close our eyes. And tonight, whether you're here at the Kennedy Center or you're watching on television, listening on radio, I want to suggest you pray this simple prayer to God. Telling God that you're sorry for the ways you have failed. And placing your faith in Jesus to forgive you, to save you from all of your sins. It's a simple prayer. Just pray this with me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I know that I have failed you in so many ways. And I'm truly sorry for the sin in my life. But I believe what you have said. That you love me so much. You sent your son Jesus. To die on the cross. For my sins. And right now I'm trusting in what Jesus did for me. To save me from my sins. Thank you for forgiving me. And help me to spend the rest of my life serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you've been born again. You're a brand new person. I hope you'll tell somebody. I hope you'll find a good Bible-believing, spirit-filled church and grow in your faith in Christ. I know uh, we have had so many to join us on Daystar Television Network. 
as well as uh, on Fox News for a portion of tonight. But Daystar has been our ministry partner from the beginning, and we're so grateful to our friends Marcus and Joni Lamb. We're grateful to our friends at Salem Radio and so many other outlets who are carrying tonight's program. And let me just say, for those of you who are tuned in, if you would like an absolutely free complimentary DVD of tonight's Celebrate Freedom Rally, one that includes all of this music, the President's remarks, everything up until the end. We would love to send it to you free of charge. All you need to do is go to our website, Pathway to Victory. That's our broadcast ministry. It's ptv.org, ptv.org, and we'll send that DVD of tonight's wonderful presentation to you absolutely free of charge. You know, there's so many people, and by the way, isn't that a nice thing? Nobody's asking you for money. We just want to send it to you as a gift. <laughs> now, our choir has a couple of more unbelievable numbers to do, but I want to take uh, just a moment to say thank you to all of our area churches who came tonight. Thank you for coming and participating in tonight's service. I want to say thank you to all of the area pastors and area churches who supported tonight's event. And uh, I want to say thank you to our friend, Pastor Paula White, uh, for being here tonight and other faith leaders as well for coming out this evening. But I think you would like to join me in saying a special word of thanks to this incomparable choir and orchestra under the direction of Dr. Duran Budd from the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. I am so proud to be their pastor. Thank you, choir, for the fantastic job, the orchestra, that you did tonight. Dr. Budd. Conservative or liberal, however they're defined, it's not about interpretation or the judgment of the mind. It's the opposite of politics, power, or prestige. It's about a simple message and whether we believe. It's still the cross, it's still the blood of the Calvary that cleanses sin and sets the captive free. It's still the name, the name of Jesus that has power to save the lost. It's still. And water down theology and preach a word to suit our needs. We can justify sweet, subtle lies that are wrapped in noble deeds. We can alter our convictions to adapt to social winds, but we cannot change the gospel or the message it contains.
All right, folks, thank you very much for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. President Trump delivered a powerful, powerful speech regarding religious freedom, regarding the veterans. You know, we have to take care of our veterans and the VA and also the Wounded Warriors program, all that stuff. Um, the speech was very moving. And, in, you know, it was also to start the celebration for the 4th of July. Um, we are going to be in a little bit of a, of a slow uh, of a slow transition for the next few days. And uh, we'll start normal operation for streaming and all that stuff, uh, that stuff on uh, July the 6th, it was, which is Thursday. Uh, we're going to be gone for the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th. We might have some streams, but um, it very, I, I really don't know exactly how the, the president's um, schedule is. I'm pretty sure that he's going to be in, uh, I think he's going to be in New Jersey. So the president might not have any any events on those three days, but we will come back on the 6th of July for normal operations. Thank you very much for choosing Golden State Times as your stream of choice. If you are new, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys here next time. Again, we might have some streams on the 3rd, 4th, or the 5th. I might have, you know, an IRL stream on the 4th. You know, I'm going to be shooting guns and stuff, so I might stream. I might not. I'm not 100% sure. But to celebrate the 4th of July, what which better way to do it than shooting off AR-15s? I think that's the best way <laughs> to bring in and say happy birthday to the good USA. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys on the 6th for sure. Peace. And really quick, just happy 4th of July to everybody. I hope you guys have a safe uh, event and how you guys have a safe weekend. And, uh, you know, if you guys have the day off, enjoy it. And uh, if you are a proud gun owner, go out to the range or do, you know, if, you, if you're in a state that can shoot out weapons, then, you know, go have fun with your weapons and uh, just know that nobody's going to ever take them away. Your Second Amendment is safe, folks. Here in California, we actually uh, blocked a, a law that wanted to punish anybody that had high-capacity magazines, which is more than 10. Here in California, you can only buy a capacity of 10 magazines, uh, of, you know, like, you know um, a clip, and, um, but it was blocked. So if you had one that had more of a capacity than 10, you were supposed to surrender it and all that stuff, but not no more. We blocked that here in, in California. So it's starting to turn. We're going to have a better, uh, more respect the Second Amendment. And um, it's just going to be better from here. So if you're a proud gun owner on the 4th, go out shooting, go out to your nearest range or whatever and have some fun. Go watch your fireworks, but as, stay safe as always. Thank you very much, everyone. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.
celebrate the blessing of being Americans. And we want to say a big thank you to those who are serving and have served in America's military. The men and women who defend and protect our country and its citizens. Amen. So if you're here tonight and you are serving or you have served, when we sing the song that represents your branch of service, stand and wave your flag because we want to sing and say thank you. How about those in the United States? for your service. Oh, you may be seated, everyone. What a great moment. And here's another one. Would you help me welcome to our stage tonight a friend of ours. He's the Dean of the School of Church Music at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. We love him, Dr. Leo Day. Come and sing for us.
Well, we're thankful tonight for our opportunity to premiere that song, Make America Great Again. And we're also thankful. And we're thankful that its composer, a former minister of music at First Baptist Church of Dallas, is here with us celebrating tonight. Gary Moore, would you please stand? Great job. Well, while we're thanking folks, I would like to take a dedicated moment to thank our Daystar television host, Marcus and Joni Lamb. Thank you for your generosity toward us tonight. <laughs> Lastly, I would, thank, I would like to thank the six area choirs that have joined us from area churches to perform a mass choir for the singing of a song, including our next song, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. These are Trinity Life Church, Christ Chapel Church, Emmanuel Bible Church, West End Assembly of God, Riverdale Ministries, and First Baptist Church of Alexandria. Thank you for joining us and lending your voices to us tonight. With 
the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. Why?
Good evening and welcome as we celebrate America together. Stand with me as the United States colors are presented. On behalf of Dr. Robert Jeffress and the First Baptist Church of Dallas, it is my honor to welcome those present tonight and the millions of viewers throughout the world joining us on Daystar Television to the Celebrate Freedom concert at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts here in Washington, D.C. As Jesus Christ instructed us, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. And tonight, we honor those military veterans, those heroes who courageously served our country so that we could enjoy freedoms and religious liberties as Americans. Moreover, we are here tonight to celebrate the freedom we have through Jesus Christ. When the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. And so tonight in our nation's capital, we praise and proclaim the name of Jesus, the Son of God, who came and humbled himself becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, but rose again in victory so that we might enjoy freedom from sin and death forever. Now, coming to lead us in prayer tonight, the representative from the great state of Texas, Congressman Louis Gomert.
Well, thank you. Uh, sometimes when people get ready to pray, they ask you to stand. Sometimes they ask you to sit. But I am living proof that God hears you. Whether you're standing up, whether you're lying on your face, whether you're dangling from a rope 40 feet up, God hears your prayer. What's important? And this is what I ask you to do. Would you please bow your hearts with me? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can call you Father, that you are our God. And we thank you for the greatest blessing you've given us, the blessing of liberty. You've given us freedom of choice. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the opportunity to spread with our earthly voices the sublime, the good news about Jesus Christ. And we know George Washington prayed that you would have our country in your holy protection and affection, that we would have that affection for those who have served in our military. So we thank you for allowing us to be your hands to comfort, to nurse our military's wounds, and, as Lincoln said, to bind up those wounds. But we confess to our failing you as your hands, failing to care for those who borne the battle, as we allowed too often our Veterans Administration to grow with increasing bureaucracy with more reasons not to help our heroes. We know so many heroes have been helped by the VA, but so many under our allowance have not done them justice. So we pray that we will cease refusing to even acknowledge ways that our nation has been responsible for hurting our veterans, whether Agent Orange or water at Camp Lejeune. Father, help us to address those problems and never, ever betray our military. We pray that you will continue with the patience you've given us and have just a little more patience as we, with souls anew, commit to helping those who have put their lives at risk for us. And may no one ever hear as some of us did at Fort Benning when the flags presented to the survivor with the words, on behalf of a grateful nation, the family say, where? Where's the grateful nation? There is none. Father, please help us to ensure that never happens again. We acknowledge that too often the reasons that our veterans are giving up hope is because they don't know the hope in you. So we pray that you will allow in this administration the indications that this president has made that they are going to be able to worship their Lord instead of having to remove your name and your symbols from the tanks, the barracks, the foxholes, the submarines, the planes that you will return as the hope of our military for all who know you. And we pray that you will be acknowledged as the one true hope. We know there are more veterans now and more active military taking the permanent solution to their temporary problems. And Father, we must take some responsibility because we have withheld from them the one true hope, as Chuck Colson said, our hope will be in and is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So, Father, I also pray that the study that was done by our military entity of thousands to try to figure out why so many were committing suicide will finally be brought forward so that if it's true what I've told that that those that killed themselves that were studied were in the 2% least religious of all those in the military. Father, if that's true, we need to know it and we need to fix it. And Father, I close this plea to you, Lord, quoting George Washington in his prayer and his resignation as a commander.
that you would dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, to demean ourselves with such charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion. He knew Jesus Christ. May all of our military come to know. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of the choir of orchestra of First Baptist Dallas and all who are our church family back in Texas, we are thankful that you're here to celebrate with us. Thousands, maybe millions tonight tuning in. But for all of our friends here in the Kennedy Center, wave your flags and sing the songs that celebrate America with us.
Ladies and gentlemen, the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Dr. Robert Jeffress. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Trust me, I'm just the warm-up act. <laughs> Good evening. I am Robert Jeffers, the pastor of the great First Baptist Church in Dallas. And on behalf of First Baptist Church Dallas, we want to welcome you to this Celebrate Freedom Rally live from the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. In Psalm 33, verse 12, the psalmist declared, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It is absolutely an, it is absolutely an indisputable fact that our nation was founded on a love for God and a reverence for His Word. And because of that, we have experienced the undeserved favor of God upon our country. But it is also an indisputable fact that in recent years there have been those who have tried to separate our nation from its spiritual foundation. And that reality has caused many of us, many Christians, to despair and to wonder, is God finished with America? Are our best days over? Has God removed His hand of blessing from us? But in the midst of that despair, came November the 8th, 2016. And that day, <laughs> that day represented the greatest political upset in American history. Because it was on that day, November 8th, that God declared that the people, not the pollsters, were going to choose the next president of the United States. And they chose Donald Trump. You know this. You've heard it often. President Trump won the evangelical vote by the largest margin in history because Christians understood that he alone had the leadership skills necessary to reverse the downward death spiral our nation was in. And since that time, since that time, everywhere I go, I find that people are even more excited about President Trump than they were on Election Day. And it's easy to understand why. President Trump has not only met, but he has exceeded our every expectation in reviving the economy, rebuilding our military, respecting our veterans, and restoring our greatest freedom of all, the free exercise of our faith. <laughs> President Trump has done more to protect religious liberty than any president in United States history, and we are grateful to him for that. You know, the single greatest honor of my life was when President Trump invited me to deliver the sermon at St. John's Church on the morning of his inauguration. And in that message, I said no president has ever entered the Oval Office with as many natural gifts and leadership abilities as President Trump. But I also noted that President Trump would be the first to say that natural ability alone is not enough to meet the awesome challenges of that office. And that is why President Trump, like every American president, has sought God's supernatural help. You know, I will never forget that message so many of us saw that the president tweeted from Israel several months ago. Do you remember the picture? 
It was a president of a picture of President Trump standing in front of the Western Wall. His head was bowed. His eyes were closed. And at the bottom of that tweet, he wrote, I am asking for God's wisdom. That is one reason I am so enthusiastically supportive of this president. You know, millions of Americans believe that the election of President Trump represented God giving us another chance, perhaps our last chance to truly make America great again. And how grateful we are. We thank God every day that he gave us a leader like President Trump. Would you join me now in welcoming a great leader, a great patriot, my friend, the President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. This is some group. Some group. Nice to win, isn't it? Isn't it nice to win? Robert, thank you very much for that incredible introduction. And thank you to everyone from First Baptist Dallas. Thank you. Pastor, you and Amy have stood with us since the very, very beginning. And I will always stand with you. I've told you that, and I mean that. I will always be with you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm honored to join you at the first ever 4th of July Freedom Rally taking place here at the Kennedy Center as we pay tribute to those who have proudly served our nation in uniform. Thank you very much. Tonight, we have been inspired by music that fills our hearts, stirs our souls, and reminds us all of who we are. One nation under God. To First Baptist music director, Doran Bug, and to every musician and member of the choir who has performed with such incredible grace and skill. And I heard them backstage. I said, let me out there. That is the most beautiful music. Beautiful. 